Hey, True Believers, Anglin Teen here with another episode of Comic Book Origins, which is also going to be a little bit of a classic comic book review, where we're taking a look at the very first horror comic book. I thought this was an interesting little grab here. Somebody said, uh, let's do a comic book origin of horror comics, and this is it. And I did a little digging. This isn't actually the very first horror comic book. The first horror comic book was a classic comics of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Now, this is like a precursor to Classic Illustrated. And I thought, no, let's find the first series. And that ended up being Adventures into the Unknown. But that wasn't the first horror comic book. Or at least not the first horror comic book with original content. That's what I wanted to look into. And that is Eerie Comics. So I figure, what the heck? Now, this is a commissioned video. If you want to commission a video, go right on over to Ko-Fi. Link's in the description below. Pick out any of these topics you see here. And, of course, you get to pick the subject of them. You know, comic book origins videos like this one or uh, any kind of thing. I look forward to whatever you may have. And, uh, like, my goodness gracious, this is the one I didn't write down. Oh, my goodness Whoever commissioned this one, thank you very, very much. And with all that aside, let's get this party started and take a look at Eerie Comics number one. As always, we begin with a cover. And in all honesty, this is an incredibly simple cover. We've got Nosferatu is what it looks like to me coming down from a stairway to outside to attack a woman. Obviously, that's what's going on here. It's not bad. I do like the cover. I, I mean, uh, the colors that are going on behind the Eerie Comics thing, but it's incredibly simple. So, I don't know, 50-50, 75-25 good, I would say. Now, I am going to do this a little bit different than the usual comic book origins in which I'm going to do reviews of every story. This is a 53-page book, and I figure, what the heck, instead of going and doing dialogue and everything like that and making this an hour and a half long video, I'll do it this way and just talk about generally what's going on in every storyline. And we start off with the eyes of the tiger, the thrill of the fight, and this, basically, this splash page tells you everything you need to know about what's about to happen. The book opens with an insurance doctor. He's arriving at a mansion. He's supposed to check this guy out, and he doesn't want to be there. He shows up. He's all, he's in a pissy mood anyway. And he shows up, and he's like, well, even if we do insure this guy, it doesn't look like he's going to live long. And the dude's like, hey, have you ever seen a more fit body? But the guy checks his heart and realizes, dude, you're about to die drop dead at any moment the guy's like say what and he's like hold on you can't leave without insuring me I, i've got a and the guy's like why not you don't have any family or anything there's nothing he goes but my cats and the dude's like dude you are a freaking nut bar and he goes oh yeah but you can't leave without insuring me or i'll feed you to my tiger and he opens the door and this tiger comes in and begins to uh, chase the insurance doctor around the room until finally the guy faints and the dude's like, all righty, I'm going to keep him here tomorrow. We're going to convince him to insure me. And he goes, he would never guess that I raised my tiger not to taste human flesh. He's never really eaten meat until at night he finds his tiger licking blood off of his feet. And for the first time, the tiger's taste of blood. And instead of becoming a nice little house pet, the tiger now wants to eat him. So the guy pulls a pistol out of his drawer that he saves for robbers only, and he shoots at the tiger, grazing his neck only. This begins a chase in the, around the house. The man goes upstairs to try to get away, and he keeps turning around shooting, but he's running at the same time, not getting a good shot. He only has a bullet left. So when the tiger sticks his head through a door, he just pulls the trigger right into the skull, killing it. But for some reason, I swear to gosh, there's nothing saying why this guy is doing this. He starts seeing the tiger's eyes and then all of a sudden the tiger just bursts into the room and chases him outside where he runs into an, the other tiger and ends up dropping dead in front of it. The medical examiner awakens and he sees what happened. He's like, well, the other tiger was dead. Why did this guy run out here and die? And that was the twist. That's the only twist in... There you go. That's the whole story. It's all right up to the point where you're like, why is this guy going nuts? It just didn't make any sense. I understand they want some sort of twist. The bad guy's got to get his comeuppance, but this one just didn't make sense. The next story is called Dead Man's Tale. And goodness gracious, it's all about a guy who's died and they, they tell why and everything. And it's... Starts off a little stale, I gotta say. It took a little bit to get going, so 
And and that's one of the biggest problems of this story. It actually took a couple of pages. It's it's the longest story so far. Well, I mean, it's the second one, but it's the longest story in the book as well. But what ends up happening is they this guy shows up and they decide to tell the tale of why he's dead. It's a coroner. And I'm actually thinking this is kind of a Tales of the Crypt kind of thing, and it would work. And as the story goes, though, it gets better. They These two guys are traveling, or this guy's traveling, and uh, he meets up with a hobo, and he's got this bottle, and he takes a drink, he makes a wish, and the guy's going, wait a second, what's going on here? And he says, well, anytime I take a drink of this, uh, I I get a wish. And he says, but i got to be very careful, because as soon as the liquid is gone, uh, you die. You know, that's the whole thing. And so the guy gets greedy and he, you know, he takes a drink and when he wishes for a better car and when it appears, it's like, oh my gosh, this is good. I'm going to keep this with me because, and he steals it from the little old old hobo guy who uh, then kind of becomes sort of a spirit of sorts who's like, well, I'll prove to you at some point in time I'm going to have your soul because of uh, your greed and all that kind of stuff. And the guy goes off. And he becomes wealthy. He gets married to the most beautiful woman, gets the mansions, blah, 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 yada, yada, and realizes that, wait a second. Oh, yeah, and he has a daughter. And he decides, oh, wait a second, there's not a lot of this stuff left, and I better protect it. So he goes along and gets a wall safe for it. But his daughter's been seeing his dad carry around this bottle uh, of goo, and decides that, well, you know, she wants to try a little bit of it. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, I could see where this goes. I think this is uh, this is interesting, you know, because the way I would have done it is quite a lot different than what they would have done it. See, to me, the guy drinks it right down to the bottom, and the, and the old man said, well, if, you know, you let the liquid dissipate, if you let the last drop vanish, then you're going to die. Well, the daughter... I'm going to spoil it for you anyway, because I don't think a lot of people are going to read this book because it's so old anyway. Um, But the daughter ends up breaking the bottle and the guy dies. And I'm thinking, wait a second. No, no, wait. If he if the guy dies, then wouldn't the original person die? Right. I know I'm thinking way too much on a golden age horror story, but that's that's correct. Uh, Am I wrong here? It's just that uh, wouldn't the original person, if you pass it on and the guy lets the liquid go down, I thought this story would be a lot better if the daughter died. You know, she's been interested. What's in, you know, every kid, and this could be a cautionary tale for kids getting into the liquor cabinet. But, um, yeah, every kid's been kind of in, interested in, you know, that the drink underneath the, the shelf, you know, the drink in the liquor cabinet, that kind of stuff. And in this case, if the guy came back from his fox hunt, because that's what they did in the golden age. He comes back, he sees his daughter's messed with his bottle, and because she was the one who caused the last drop of liquid to not be in the bottle any longer, she ended up dying. I think that would have been so, so much uh, more of a horror story for a guy who, who his own greed and his own negligence led to the death of his child rather than uh, his own death. I think, I don't know, maybe that's me. Maybe that's me. In the end, the story is all right it's not bad for a golden age horror story i just think it could have been so much better with a little bit of thought as to what they said would happen and what did happen anyway yeah once again i think it is the um i think in the end it it wasn't bad it just it could have been so much better it could have been like a classic story Next up, we have a story called The Man-Eating Lizards, which really is kind of strange because these... Okay, first, these guys, they're in a World War II bomber plane, and it goes down in the ocean. And while they're heading towards an island, the natives come out to greet them, taking the wounded man, dragging them behind to attract sharks so they would eat the guy. While they're on the island, uh, they have the guys tied up, and you're thinking, okay, I, I see where this is going. It's going to be kind of a King Kong thing. They put them out for the uh, lizards. And the the guys actually witness as the chief beats his wife and daughter. And so after that, they take the guy, the, the Americans, and they tie them up to the post, and we see the dragon, the, the big lizards, whatever you want to call them. And that's going to be their fate. They're going to be fed to the lizards. 
when all of a sudden the women burst out of the, the forest to attack the, uh, the, the king and, and his men, and they tie the king to the post and lead the Americans away, and the dragons obviously eat the king instead, and that's the moral of the story. Don't beat your women or they'll feed you to the lizards. Uh, it really is that. Uh, you could take it other ways, considering the women are white, the men are white, and the natives are not. Uh, <laughs> overall, though, I was like, really? This is where you're going to go? Okay, it was. it's a silly story, but I guess they got to try to do... Uh, they have to try to do the women's lip thing and everything. And it, it's okay. It wasn't really all that great, to tell you the truth. It, it didn't offend me, but it was pretty bad. But there you go. Strange story. So Goofy Ghost is the comedy part, and it's about a new ghost who's going to go and haunt a new place that's never been haunted before. He gets there, he hears noises, he gets scared, and he's chased out. We find out it's an owl. It's not funny, and that's all there is to it. Mystery of Murder Mansion is the precursor to every Scooby-Doo tale you've ever heard. These guys need to get it. I mean, they're like in like Snake Bite Creek. And they, uh, oh, it's we got to get out of Snake Bite Creek where we could be dry and let's go into Murder Mansion. That's literally, well, not literal the line of dialogue, but there is a line of dialogue like that. So they get in there and the guy asks, oh, well, tell me the story of Murder Mansion. There's a lost treasure supposedly in the house somewhere. Uh, they hear a voice saying, hey, you know, if you, you don't leave, you're going to die. And when one of them's chasing around this ghost, a man tries to kill the other one. And we find out it's because he, oh, by the way, this scene right here is really cool because he's like, ooh, my favorite Southern general, Robert Lee, will save a son of the South. I'm like, yeah, not really good for the times, I think. Uh, I don't care because, you know, I, I just don't. But I thought, yeah, that would go over well these days. Anyway. They flat out Scooby Doo this thing it, where it's like, oh, and everybody thought it was a murder mansion when it was just this guy trying to protect a big case of seashells and rocks. It's silly, it's stupid, it's forgettable. And the book ends with the strange case of Henpecked Harry, which, come on, guys. Okay, so this guy, uh, everybody knows he gets in fights with his wife and everything, so he goes upstairs, she's yelling and screaming, and every bit of, okay, if this woman dies, she deserves it, and so she yells, I'm gonna drive you nutty, and you know how nutty that is, and he goes, as mad as a murderer, you know, and so he actually starts seeing things that kind of push him towards murdering his wife, and he gets the idea that, well, okay, I've got a great way to do it. He sees her at the subway and he yells, hey, quit pushing, and kind of bumps into the guy who is behind his wife, who then falls into the train, uh, tr onto the train tracks, gets hit, hit by the train, and we see that he's haunted by her, and this uh, drives him mad, and he ends up being chased over the side of a building. To which we are, we find out that uh, the woman who died was not didn't come to work, of course, and another, the woman who said, "Hey, where's where's Henrietta?" I think that was her name, and the secretary says, uh, "Did you hear Henrietta got hit by a train?" And she goes, "That is so weird because my Harry died of a heart attack or, or died from falling off a building, and uh, she was wearing my coat." So I guess to. Uh, to say it's okay that the husband died was because he was actually having an affair and the woman that he was having an affair with was the one he murdered. Well, here you go. Stop having the freaking affair. Uh, yeah, just leave. Goodbye. Bye-bye now. Um, and plus, why are you having the affair is something. Or he's a bigamist. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it, it wasn't good. It wasn't the best story of the uh, book. Actually... Now that I'm thinking of it, that long one there, that was the best story of the book, I would have to say. But yeah, there you go, guys. That is the very first horror comic. I wanted to do it review style uh, because if I had done dialogue and everything, it would be far, far too long. And in the end, I, I kind of like it. I like these Golden Age horror stories. And, but it's an anthology. Most books in the Golden Age were anthologies, which means you're going to have... Some that were better than others. Overall, though, this is a very entertaining book. This what came off of the Digital Museum, uh, Digital Comic Book Museum. It's a uh, public domain 
site where you could download all sorts of comics in the public domain. This one is in the public domain. And I would recommend you check out all sorts of good Golden Age books from that website. Anyway, what did you think? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, don't forget to click like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you haven't done it already. And um, if you don't mind helping out the channel, uh, make sure that your notifications are on all. And go on over to Patreon or to uh, Ko-Fi and drop a dollar in the tip jar. All of the live streams are ending up on... Uh, Patreon, by the way, uh, that we do over at I Love Comics. So you do get that. They are immediately taken off I Love Comics, and they're going to be put on to Patreon. And uh, uh, over at Ko-Fi, you can, like this one, commission a video. Just pick out whatever topic and whatever subject you want, and uh, we'll get that out to you ASAP. Like, thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching. <laughs>